Okay, in this video we will be reviewing rational expressions. For the first part, we need to know the whole idea of a rational expression. And so the definition of that would be a rational expression is a quotient. And remember, quotient is the answer to a division problem. So a rational expression is a quotient of two polynomial expressions. You also need to remember that the order when adding doesn't matter. And here on this second part, that if you have subtraction and you change the order, you're going to end up with a negative 1 after you cancel. All right, so for all simplifying here, the very first thing you have to do would be to factor and then cancel. Now keep in mind that this is going to be our cube formula that we talked about in the previous lesson. So when we factor this, you're keeping in mind what cubed times what else cubed, or plus or minus what else cubed. So we're going to have for this one, this is 4k all cubed minus 1 all cubed. And so that's going to get us started in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we would multiply that 4 over. We would do our slide, and then we'll divide. So we have k squared minus 13k plus 12. Now we're getting this set up and ready to factor. So let's see, in the numerator, we're going to have 4k minus 1. And then remember, we would have to square. We're going to flip our sign. And then we'll multiply, and then we'll square our last term again. And then in the denominator, here we will factor. We are going to get k minus 12 times k minus 1, but then we do have to come over and divide. Remember, it is slide and divide. So the first parentheses is going to be k minus 3. And then the second one, 1 fourth, will not reduce anymore, so we move the 4 up. And so it's going to be 4k minus 1. After we've done our factoring, then and only then can we come back and do our canceling. So be very careful with this. You're canceling all of the parentheses with all of the other parentheses. So your final answer after we've done our factoring and our canceling, this final answer, the numerator, is going to be 16k squared plus 4k plus 1 all over k minus 3. Okay, on our next example, again, same idea. You need to factor, then cancel. So the first thing that you're going to do in the numerator, looks like you have a GCF of 12n, so let's factor out 12n. And so you're going to have n minus 4 left. And then in the denominator, gosh, with 18, I would start with 18. 18 does divide into 288, and then m with the smallest exponent. And when you do your division here, you're going to get 16 minus n squared. Now from that, we can factor the denominator again. So I'm going to bring over the numerator. And then with that denominator, that is the difference of two squares. Now the order has been changed. So if you want to move, change this order back around, we can factor out a negative if you want to, or we can leave it like it is and factor either way. If we leave it like it is, which is perfectly okay, make sure you write the um, 4 first in both parentheses, both the adding and the subtracting. Now notice that this is going to be the first case that we talked about in canceling from right up here. These are opposites of each other. And if you're not sure, plug in a number 4 in just in that situation to see if you get a number and its opposite. So we'll be able to cancel those. Now keep in mind when you're canceling, those are ones that are left. In this case, it's a negative one that's left. 12, let's see, I believe a six will come out of both of those. So I have two and three. And if we subtract our n exponents, then there's an n left. So it looks like our final answer is gonna be a negative two from that part over 3n times 4 plus n. And that's going to be as far as we need to go with that. Please don't multiply it back out. All right, let's move on to the next. OK, 
Okay, now we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing these expressions. And instead of multiplying all this out like a crazy mad person, what we're going to do is, again, start out by factoring, canceling, then multiplying. Because that's going to make it so much easier. Just like in your um, younger years when you had to multiply fractions and then you would need to reduce, that's going to be the situation here. So we're going to do some factoring first and see what we can reduce, and then we'll do our multiplying. So this numerator here, we're going to factor that. Looks like negative 6, nope, negative, let's see, factors of 24. So we're going to do negative 12 and a positive 2. There we go. Okay, and then in the denominator, we've got x squared. So we're going to have x plus 2 left times... And then it looks like over here, we're going to factor out a 5x. And so we have x minus 4 left. And then in the denominator here, let's see. Looks like we're going to have to use um, negative 12 and negative 4. All right, now that we have it factored, now you do the canceling. Never, ever before. So let's see, x plus 2, x plus 2. And we have those ones that are left. The minus 4s will cancel. 12s, those will also cancel. So it looks like we have a 5x over an x squared. So one of those x's will cancel. So our final answer is going to be 5 over x. And that's a lot easier to find if you multiply or cancel, factor, then cancel. All right, so our next problem. So it looks like we're going to have some slide and divide here. We will need to multiply this 5 over. And when we do that, that's going to give us 30. And so in our factoring process, it looks like we're going to have P um, and another P. And for 30, it looks like we're going to need a positive 30 and a negative 1. But then remember, it's slide and divide, so I'm going to have to come back and divide. And then in the bottom, let's see, we're going to slide and divide again. So I'm really looking at the factors of 25. So I'm going to have P and P here. And so the factors of 25, it looks like negative 25 and negative 1. But then we have to come back and divide by 5. So let's not forget that. Times, and let's see, our other fraction, we're going to factor out 3P. And it looks like we're going to have a P minus 5 left. And then in the bottom, we're going to have 6 minus P times 6 plus P. Now, notice over here, I didn't um, move the bottom back up. And really, as long as you recognize that it'll reduce to be equivalent, you won't have to move it until the very end. So let's see what I mean by that. Let's pick on P plus 30 over 5. 30 over 5 is really 6, and so I have a P plus 6. That'll cancel with 6 plus P. So notice I saved myself a step there. The same is true down in the denominator with 25 over 5. I know that's 5, and that's going to cancel with that one. P minus 1 fifth cancels with P minus 1 fifth. And so notice what's left over. We have 3P in the numerator over 6 minus p in the denominator. Now please don't try to cancel the 3p with the 6 or the other p. This down here is subtraction. You're not going to cancel that unless it's an entire different 6 minus p in the numerator. So be careful with that. Now we're to dividing fractions. And this is where we talked about keep, change, flip. And I want y'all to keep, change, flip first, then start the factoring. Because if you don't and you try to do too much of this at one time, you will mess up, I promise. Not that you, I'm wanting you to mess up, I definitely don't, but I want you to be careful so that you are successful. So I'm going to keep the first, change the second, and then flip. So it's keep, change, flip. And so now I'm going to flip over 2s squared minus 3s plus 1. And that's all over 2s squared minus s minus 1. Now we're ready to do the slide and divide and all of the factoring things that we've just worked through. 
So here I'm going to slide and divide. That's going to give me 24. And so it looks like I'm going to factor this into S plus 3 times S plus 8. And again, don't forget to come back and divide by that 6 because it was slide and divide. And then down on the bottom, you're going to have 1 minus 2S times 1 plus 2S. That's your difference of squares. And then here again, you're going to multiply this over. And so you're going to have, uh, let's see, a 2 right here. So looks like we're going to have S minus 2 times S minus 1. And again, don't forget to come back and divide by that 2. And then in the bottom, same idea, slide and divide again. So we're looking at the factors of 2 once more. So we're going to have S minus 2 times S plus 1. And again, we're going to divide by 2. And again, I don't need you to go back through and move up anything right now. Go through and cancel what you can. So notice this would really be a one half here. So S plus a half will cancel with that S plus a half. And let's see, this is S minus one. That would be an S minus one. And let's see, what, what are we gonna get here? That's gonna be, if we take out a two maybe, that's gonna give me four thirds. So I don't see a four thirds there. Now there is something that's making me think we might can do a little bit more, and that's going to be with this two here. If I move that up, that's really two s minus one, which is the opposite of one minus two s. So I can cancel those with a negative one left. It looks like we are ready to write our final answer. So in the numerator, we have this portion here left and we have that negative one left. So I'm just gonna put the negative out to the side or you can put it out front, either one. And we do need to move that three up to be the coefficient. So I have three S plus four. And then in the denominator, it looks like we had a one plus two S left over. All right, moving on to number six. Again, do your keep change flip first, make it a little bit easier on yourselves and get that step out of the way. So we have um, k to the fourth. Well, my pen stopped working. Okay, so here we're going to do that keep change flip. And so we have k to the fourth minus 16 over 2k squared minus k minus 6 times, and we're going to move 12k squared plus 18k to the top over 4k cubed plus 16k. Now we're ready to do some factoring magic. And so here it looks like we're going to have in the numerator k squared minus 4 times k squared plus 4. And then in the denominator, we're going to have that 2 multiplied over. So we're really looking at the factors of 12. So we're going to have k minus 4 times k plus 3. And then don't forget to come back and divide by that 2. And then times, and then it looks like we have a 6k for a GCF. And so that's going to leave me a 2k plus 3. And then in the denominator, it looks like a 4k as well. So I'm left with a k squared um, plus 4. Now we're ready to try to do some canceling if possible. So let's see what we can cancel. The k squared minus 4. No, k squared plus 4s will cancel. Um, this would end up being 2k plus 3. Let's see, and these k's here will cancel, and we can take a 3 out, or a, sorry, a 2 out of both of those. And then, um, let's see, we're left with this, and this will factor again, the numerator will. So we're going to um, maintain that we still have our times 3 halves, but we need to factor k squared minus 4 is going to be k plus 2 
times k minus 2, I almost wrote an x there, over, and all of that would reduce to be k minus 2, and then that's times 3 over 2 left. So notice those will cancel. So our final answer should be 3 times k plus 2, and that's all over 2. And now we're ready to talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions. And the very first thing you need to do is to get a least common denominator, 4, and you have 4w and 5w. So that least common denominator, notice 4 times 5, that's going to give you 20. And then you're choosing the smallest exponent that you see of w, so it's just 20w. So let's stack this like you did back in elementary school because it tends to help us see what's going on. So I'm going to stack these and I'm going to say 3 over 4w is equal to what over 20w? And I'm going to do our subtraction and I'm going to say 2 over 5w is equal to what over 20w? And again, we're going to ask ourselves, well, what did we multiply to 4w? to end up with 20w, and it looks like we multiplied from here to here, we multiplied by a 5, so I have to multiply the top by a 5 to create that equivalent fraction. So I have 15 over 20w. Now don't try to cancel that because then you would go right back where you started and you just made a big old circle. Now the same thing here, from 5w to 20w, you multiplied by a 4, so we need to multiply by a 4 up here and we get 8. So now we're ready to subtract these. We have 15 over 20w minus 8 over 20w, and remember 15 minus 8 is going to give us 7 over 20w. So hopefully that's not too bad, and we will keep practicing here. Let's look at number 8. Same idea, however, 3 it really doesn't have a denominator, so we have to think back. We would put whole numbers over 1 to make those a fraction. And so we need to find a least common denominator between 1 and the quantity x plus 4. So again, if you're not sure, you can just multiply these two. And your least common denominator is going to be x plus 4. So again, let's stack these. I have 2x minus 1 over x plus 4, what would I have to multiply to maintain x plus 4? Well, it's just a 1, so I'm going to rewrite 2x minus 1. And then I have minus, so I'm going to subtract from that, and I have 3 over 1. Well, what am I going to multiply to that 1 to build this equivalent fraction to x plus 4? Well, the same as we did earlier, it's going to multiply by x plus 4. So I have to take our 3 and multiply that by x plus 4. So let's look at what this ends up being. And this is usually where we end up going back to our traditional way of writing this. So I have 2x minus 1 over x plus 4. And that's going to be minus 3 times x plus 4 over x plus 4. So when we write this out, I'm going to put this all together. We already have a common denominator now. So from the first fraction, I have 2x minus 1. I'm going to distribute the negative 3, so I'm going to have minus 3x minus 12. I'm going to collect my like terms, so it looks like I'm going to have a negative x minus 13, and that's all over x plus 4. And this would be our final answer. Okay, now we're to the types of problems where we might have to factor, then try to simplify, then try to find a common denominator. So looking at um, number 9, it looks like that r squared minus 25, that should factor into r plus 5 times r minus 5. And so notice that we can cancel those. And so really I have 1 over r minus 5 or plus 6 over r minus 5, and that worked out great because I already have a common denominator. So I'm going to put everything together over r minus 5, 
And so I'm going to have a 1 plus 6, so we have 7. So yay, that, that one wasn't just terrible. Now number 10 might be just terrible. It looks like it might be. And let's go ahead again. And notice the denominators here will factor. So a squared minus 4, that factors into a plus 2 times a minus 2. And now we're ready to find our common denominator. Now when you find your least common denominator and you're, you really don't have any numbers, we're going to write down every denominator we see. Now don't repeat it if it's repeated. The only time you would repeat it is if it had an exponent, and then you would copy that exponent. All right, so the first denominator I see is a plus 2 times a minus 2. Now let's look at that second denominator. This one doesn't have anything different from what I already have written down. So I already have my common denominator. And so again, we can stack these or we can compare them. I've got 5a plus 6 over a plus 2 times a minus 2, right? And then I'm going to have minus. Now, this other denominator is different. It's just an a plus 2, but I want to build it so that it's a plus 2 times a minus 2. So let's look at this. What did I multiply to this denominator to come up with this one? And it looks like the difference is an a minus 2. So I need to come back up, and whatever numerator I have, which in this case is 1, I need to multiply that by a minus 2. Now I have built equivalent fractions, and I'm ready to solve. Again, please don't try to cancel out. A lot of people, they're like, oh, look at me, I'm Smarty Bridges, and you cancel, and all you've done is made a ginormous circle of nothing. So our first, or our first fraction, we can bring down 5a plus 6. Then we have minus, and I would distribute that to each part to save some of this writing. So you're going to have minus a plus 2. Combine those like terms. Now don't do anything else with the denominator because you're done with it. You've built it. And so the numerator, it looks like we're going to have 4a. Okay, so we're going to combine those, and we have 4a plus 8. Oh, me. So it looks like we might could factor out a GCF of 4. So let's reduce this bad boy. I'm going to factor out 4. So I have a plus 2 over a plus 2 times a minus 2. And as those a plus 2s cancel. So my final answer in this never-ending problem is 4 over a minus 2. That's your final answer. All right, so let's move on to another example, number 11. And again, we're going to have to factor these. Um, our least common denominator in our effort to build this is just like a factor tree, really. You have Q minus 4. That's from the first denominator, so I'm just going to record it. And then we're going to have to factor this. So the other part we would factor would be Q minus 4 times q minus 3. So our least common denominator, and I can go ahead and just write it over one big denominator here. We have a q minus 4, and then we also have a q minus 3. Now, I know we have more than one q minus 4, but that more than one doesn't happen in one single fraction itself. It's happening across both fractions, so we're just writing it once. All right, so again, this denominator, what did I multiply to q minus 4 to get q minus 4 times q minus 3? Well, q minus 3. So look at, I'm going to take my numerator I already have, q plus 1. Multiply that to q minus 3 because that was the new part that I didn't have. Minus, and this denominator, my new common denominator, is what I already had in my second fraction. So I'm just going to bring over the numerator, q minus 1. Now the fun part begins because now we're going to go through and foil out the top and then combine like terms. So we're going to start foiling again, least common denominator, that's all over with. So in the top, we're going to have q squared. 
and then we're going to have a negative 3q and a positive q, so that's negative 2q minus 3. And then I'm going to distribute my negative, so minus q plus 1. All that's over, and please do not multiply off the denominator. You'll never, ever, ever do that. Okay, now let's see. What can we put together? So in the numerator, we've got q squared, negative 2q, negative q, so that's negative 3q, and then we've got minus 2, and then that is all over q minus 4 times q minus 3, and no, it would be great if we're done, but we are not finished because we've got to go back and factor the numerator. That maybe, let's see, what factors of 2 can I subtract and get 3? And gosh, the more we think about it, I don't think there's any of them we can. So yay, we are done. But you did need to check to see if that would factor just in case because the previous one did. So all of that's your answer. Goodness gracious. All right. Now with problem slot number 12, ends up being a little bit easier. There's no factoring involved. And our least common denominator, well, the denominator from the first fraction is x plus 6. From the second one, x minus 1. There's no difference there. So look at what we end up with for our least common denominator. It's just going to be, I don't want to write it like that, it's just going to be x plus 6 times x minus 1. And so what did I multiply to the um, old denominator to get the new? It's going to be x minus 1. Just cover up and look at them, compare them. So I'm going to have 3 times x minus 1. I have this minus 2 times, and now compare your fractions, and it looks like we have an x plus 6 that's different. All right, now all of that's finished. The rest of it would be algebra. So we're going to full out the numerator, or distributed property there, 3x minus 3. Distribute your negative 2, so I have negative 2x minus 12, and all of this is over x plus 6 times x minus 1. And again, in the numerator, we need to combine our terms, so we're going to get x minus, looks like 15 in the top, over x plus 6 times x minus 1. And that's as far as you can do on that one. All right, these are called complex fractions. However, um, students tend to call them ugly names by the time we're finished with working with these. But maybe we can make it a little bit easier. Um, what we're going to do is find a least common denominator for this top part. We'll find a least common denominator for the bottom part, and then we'll combine those for one final least common denominator, and that should make everything work out so nice and neat. So least common denominator for 10 and 40 would be 40, and we have an R squared, so I need to include that. And the least common denominator uh, for the denominator would be 6R. Now I need a least common denominator for those two. So in other words, I've got one least common denominator, a second least common denominator. Now I need the major least common denominator. All right, for 60 or 6 and 40, I would think 120, and then R squared. Now what I'm going to do with this is multiply top and bottom, every piece of that, by 120 r squared and everything should cancel out nice and neat so i'm going to take 120 r squared and i'm going to multiply that by 1 over 10 minus 9 over 40 r oops squared and then over and i'm going to do the same thing now what you multiply top and bottom by it has to be the same value or you're changing the value of the fractions and so just the appearance of them. All right, so now distributed property. So 1 tenth times 120 r squared. That's just going to be 12 r squared. And let's see, again, and I'm going to multiply, multiply it here. Now I'm going to multiply way out here. 40 uh, r squared 
divides into 120 r squared three times. And three times nine is 27. And that's it for the top. Over, now for the bottom, the same thing. Well, three cancels into 120 40 times. So I have 40 r squared minus two cancels into 120 60. And then I have an r left. All right, now we're right back to our very first set of problems. Notice we can factor out of the numerator at least a three. And when I do that, I have four r squared minus nine. And then in the bottom, it looks like we can factor out a 10 r. And when I do that, I have four r minus six. Right, and so the top looks like it would factor again. And let's see, gosh, the bottom will too. Four and six still have something in common. This is a never ending problem. We're gonna have, let's see, two r minus three. This is the difference of two squares, two r plus three. And then in the denominator, I need to factor out two more. So if I factor out two, that's gonna give me 20 r. And then I'm going to have a 2r minus 3 left. Ah, now I see what will cancel. We can cancel the 2r minus 3s. And so now we're ready for our final answer. Hallelujah. And that final answer, it looks like we have 3 times 2r plus 3 over, and let's see, gosh, a 20r. That should be it. All right, let's try another one. Okay, number 14, same thing again. We are um, gonna look for common denominators. Again, go through that process. So here, this top part, the least common denominator up here is six. For down here, the only one I see is three y. So now I need a common denominator for six and three y, which is gonna be six y. Now I'm ready to multiply every part of that complex fraction by 6y. So I'm going to have 6y times y cubed over 2 plus y squared over 6. And then in the bottom, same thing, 6y times 1 plus 1 over 3y. All right, now let's do our distributed property. So let's see, the 2 is going to cancel with the 6, so I have... 3y times y cubed, so that's going to be 3y uh, to the fourth, plus, now we need to multiply that 6y out here, and it looks like I'm going to get a y to the third. On bottom, I'm going to have 6y plus 2, and it looks like we can do some more factoring, so I'm going to factor out a y cubed, and so that's going to leave me with a 3y, oops. 3y plus 1. And then in the bottom, I can factor out a 2. That's going to leave me with a 3y plus 1. Those 3y plus 1s cancel. So my final answer is y cubed over 2. All right, one more final example. And again, same process, not changing that process because that makes things a bit easier for us. On top, we're going to have 10 m squared n. On bottom, we're going to have 2 n squared m. So the common denominator of the common denominators here, when I put those together, we're going to have 10 m squared n squared. And that's what I'm going to go through and multiply all of the top and all of the bottom by. So let's see what that's going to look like. So here, uh, and I'm probably going to change color so it doesn't get so confusing if that's even possible. So we've got 10m squared n squared times 4m over 5n plus n squared over 10m squared. And then all of that, gracious, Again, 10m squared, n squared, times 1 over n squared, 
plus 1 over 2mn. Now let's see what we can do. When we multiply, hopefully something's going to cancel. So let's see, 5 cancels, and that leaves a 2. Okay, so I've got a 2 there. N cancels, so I've got an N. So let's see, um, that 10 has gone. We divided that out. So that's going to give me 8 m cubed n, okay, plus, now same thing over on the other side, so those 10s are going to cancel, that's good news, m squareds are going to cancel, so I'm left with an n squared times an n squared, so it's going to be an n to the fourth over, whew, then down here we've got 10, the n squareds are going to cancel, so I'm left with m squared plus 5mn. Now we need to double check and see if anything else will factor. It looks like we can take out an n in the numerator. So we're going to take out n. And when I do, I have 8m cubed plus n cubed over... And in the bottom, I can take out a 5m. And so what's left is going to be 2m plus n. Now, it looks like nothing else will factor. However, this parentheses is the sum of cubes. So we need to factor that. So when we factor uh, the sum of cubes, that's our formula. What's being cubed plus what else is being cubed. And then we're going to plug into the rest of that formula. And that's where all of these terms are coming from. It's just from that formula. And notice, we will have something to cancel. That's why we need to go back and factor when we can. And so finally, we see those will cancel. And so the final answer of the never-ending problem is going to be n times 4m squared minus 2mn plus n squared. All of that is over 5m. What a problem. All right, folks. We need to study, study, study for this section.